tier is the Komodo dragon, or Varanus komodoensis, the largest lizard in the world. Despite how magnificent this creature is, it is sadly endangered. Its cousins are also very impressive. The lace monitor, or Varanus varius, is fairly long with its tail and is very fast. The crocodile monitor, or Varanus salvadori, also has a very large tail, one that makes it the longest lizard in the world. And finally, the extinct Megalania, Varanus prisus, was a living tank and was the largest reptile ever ever recorded. It lives in Indonesia, specifically in the Lesser Sunda Islands in Komodo National Park. Here, they live in two main biomes, the dry savanna and monsoon forests. The dry savannas have a humid tropical climate and averages 30 degrees Celsius throughout the year, with precipitation peaking at May through October with an average of 240 millimeters per month, and the rest of the month receiving on average 40 millimeters per month. Monsoon forests or tropical dry forests are also humid and tropical, with an average temperature of 25.5 degrees Celsius throughout the year, peaking around April to October. Precipitation is highly seasonal, increased in May, September, and October, averaging around 450 millimeters then, and peaking from June to August at 1,168 millimeters on average. The rest of the months receive an average of just 35 millimeters. Komodo dragons love the warmth here, and like all other reptiles, they are poikilothermic and ectothermic, meaning they require the environment to heat up their body and let their systems work. Komodo dragons are notorious carnivores, being apex predators in their environment, but they're also scavengers that frequently eat carrion. Now we can finally see a Komodo dragon in the hunts. They will ambush their prey where they will attack it using their claws, teeth, and specialized adaptations. They then will utilize their keen sense of smell to track the dying animal. They can and will eat nearly any animal, from spoiled carrion to other Komodo dragons. As noted, they have several adaptations, especially for hunting. One physiological adaptation the Komodo dragon has are venom glands. They contain toxins that lead to a dramatic decrease in blood pressure, cause bleeding, and eventually induce shock. A structural adaptation they have in tandem with their venom are serrated teeth. When the Komodo dragon bites down into its prey and pulls back, it leaves large gushing wounds that mortally wound the animal. Despite their reputation as a fierce predator, Komodos need to grow to their full size in order to embrace their status. Young Komodos have a behavioral adaptation to climb into trees to avoid large birds and to prevent larger Komodos from eating them. When it comes to fulfilling their role in life and reproducing, Komodo dragons have two ways to reproduce, sexually and asexually. This is very rare with only 100 vertebrates being able to do asexual reproduction, let alone both. However, in the wild, they mainly reproduce sexually. Once a year, when they have reached sexual maturity at around 9 years of age and are ready to mate, female Komodo dragons give off a scent in their feces that males can detect. Males who reach sexual maturity at around 10 years of age locate the female and engage in ritual combat through wrestling with the other males for the right to mate. The winner will rub their chin on the female's head, scratch her back, and lick her body. If the female is interested, she will lick him back and they will mate. Mating season occurs yearly in July and August and they will lay their eggs in September, which allows the females to possibly mate twice. Asexual reproduction in Komodo dragons work because females have both male and female chromosomes of WZ, while males carry ZZ. They can reproduce parthenogenetically as they are isolated in the wild and become violent when approached most of the time, except for mating season. Parthenogenesis works because when the egg cell is created during oogenesis, a polar body with a duplicate DNA to the egg is generated, and instead of shriveling up and dying in most cases, it acts as sperm and turns the ova into embryos and komodos. This way, the komodos are not duplicates of the mother, and instead have half the mother's genome twice. This method only yields a male sovereign because the embryo's only viable chromosomes for sex are ZZ, or male. As already discussed, Komo dragons are apex predators in their environment. However, this creates the notion that they aren't unique and can be replaced by another predator, yet this isn't true. In addition to being top predators, they're also scavengers that eat dead animals and remove them from the landscape. This prevents the spread of diseases and assists with natural recycling, turning dead matter into reusable nutrients for the ecosystem. In addition to having a vital role in their environment, it can help greatly impact humans as well. Scientists are currently conducting studies on how they have lethal strains of bacteria in them, without being affected by it. If we're able to learn how they manage this, we can create a cure for many other strains of bacteria and assist in the current overprescription of antibiotics, a worldwide epidemic in its own sense. Despite how crucial they are to their environment and possibly humanity, they are tragically endangered. What's worse is that Komodo dragons are endangered due to human actions that cause them to lose their habitat. Komodo dragons mainly live near the sea, and with sea levels rising due to climate change, which is caused by humans, Komodo dragons are slowly losing their homes. Sea levels are projected to rise up to 87% by 2050, which could reduce the Komodo dragon's population by anywhere from 27 to 99%. Luckily, solutions are being created.
When numbers were low in the 1900s, Komodo National Park was created as a 700 square mile refuge to protect the Komodo dragons and other animals that live there. It is an in situ national park, which means it not only features and protects Komodo dragons, but also other protected species like Timor deer and wild water buffalo. The national park also contains a lot of marine life. It is home to species like whales, sharks, coral, and thousands of other species of fish. Despite this age, Komodo dragons are still highly susceptible to endangerment since they only inhabit the lower Sunda Islands in Indonesia, which isn't much territory. What's worse is that Komodo dragons will lose 30% of suitable habitat in the next 45 years. 25 years ago, it was estimated that 5,000 to 8,000 Komodo dragons were alive on Earth, but recently there are only around 1,380 adults and 2,000 juveniles. Due to sea levels being projected to drastically rise in the upcoming years, we believe that Komodo dragons will begin to have adaptations to swim for longer. Additionally, we will likely see Komodo dragons becoming smaller on average. In previous decades, when there was more of an abundance of Komodo dragons, the average size trended upwards. This implies that with less Komodos, they will be smaller, thereby reducing the competition for resources, meaning more of them will be able to survive. Despite this hopeful speculation, there is a serious issue of Komodo dragons go extinct. As mentioned, they are the only scavengers in its ecosystem. If they go extinct, this can result in many organisms' bodies not being decomposed, and the bacteria on the carcass can spread throughout the local food web, infecting and killing animals, including livestock and humans. Clearly, it's important for us to work together to save these awe-inspiring animals, the Komodo dragons. Thank you for watching this broadcast of our Komodo dragon documentary. From our studios in Los Angeles, good night.